Hello, I'm Nicole Dyer, and this is the Research Like a Pro with DNA question and answer series. So our question today from a Research Like a Pro with DNA study group member is what is the significance of the first cluster? And we're talking about MyHeritage clusters, autoclusters, and Collins Leeds method clusters. The question is, when clustering using the Collins Leeds method or autoclusters from MyHeritage, what is the significance of the first cluster? Is this where the most DNA matches are or matches with more shared DNA or both? So the answer is that usually the largest cluster in the top left is the one with the most matches in it. And that's why it's put first. But there are settings on each uh, clustering tool that you can adjust to change how the clusters are in order. And so let's go through some of those. With MyHeritage auto clusters, you're given a drop down box at the top that lets you choose how you want to order your DNA matches. Just look for the words that say order DNA matches by, and then look at that drop down box for your choices. They are automatically ordered by cluster. And this means that the largest cluster is the top left, the cluster with the most matches. You can choose to group the the clusters by name, number of shared matches, and shared centimorgans with the tester. But this actually is not ordering your clusters, but ordering the matches. And so what it does when you choose any of those last three is it ungroups the clusters and lists the matches in alphabetical order or by number of shared matches or by number of shared centimorgans. So you really only want to choose the first one, order DNA matches by cluster, because that's what helps you to see who all descend from a common ancestral couple. One good thing is that you can use the Genetic Affairs website to recluster your MyHeritage matches to put them into a better way of sorting them. And the way you do that is by going to the Genetic Affairs website and logging in and then scrolling down to where it says recluster MyHeritage autoclusters. And you can also recluster your old um, Genetic Affairs autoclusters here as well if they were sorted by size instead of by supercluster. So what do I mean by supercluster? Well, on genetic affairs, it says these older clustering approaches sort the clusters based on cluster size. While it is usually much more relevant to sort them using the links between the clusters. So a supercluster shows links between clusters and that's why it's better. So here's an example of a MyHeritage autocluster chart on the left where the clusters are in order by the largest cluster. So the top left red cluster has the most matches and so it's first. And then as you can see all of the gray squares that are not in a colored cluster are showing connections between the clusters. So the red cluster has connections to the yellow cluster because um, there are gray squares between the yellow and the red clusters and showing that they are shared matches with people in both clusters. So it would be better to sort these by clusters that are linked to each other. And so when you run your MyHeritage HTML file through the reclustering algorithm at Genetic Affairs, the output then looks like the one on the right, where first all of the supercluster um, is grouped together. So the red and some other smaller groups are put together and then um, the other clusters come later. And you'll see that they didn't retain the same colors. So it appears that the coloring um, just starts at number one being red, number two being orange. So what actually happened here is that on the left, the orange cluster got moved down to be uh, kind of this tan color towards the bottom right. And you can see that it's the same matches when you zoom in and look at the matches, but they're just a different color and, and it's down there. So now when I analyze this autocluster, I can see that all the maternal matches for this kid are on the top left within that supercluster. And the paternal matches are kind of down in the bottom right. The maternal side of this family has a lot of overlap between clusters. There's a lot of double cousins and, and a little bit of multiple relationships going on there. And that's why you see overlap between the clusters. Now let's talk about the Collins-Leeds method. 
when you download your matches with DNA GEDCOM client and then use DNA GEDCOM client to cluster the matches with the Collins Leads method, you get to choose the parameters. And this is the screen that you'll see in the DNA GEDCOM client in order to choose those parameters. Uh, if you're not sure what all these things mean, you can just click that green button at the bottom that says View Help. And it will take you to genetic.family slash help slash CLM, which stands for the Collins Leads method. Um, one thing that you want to think about is how to sort the matches. So I put a blue star by the word sort. This is where you can choose the way you want uh, the matches to be ordered within each cluster. So this isn't how the clusters are sorted, but how the matches in each cluster are put into order. And the two options you have for that are by inclusion. And so by inclusion means that those who match the most others in that cluster are in the upper left. And then you can also choose by centimorgans, where those who match the primary kit with the highest amount of centimorgans are in the upper left. So whichever one you want to do, you can choose when you set up your uh, Collins Leads method settings. Now let's go to the cluster sort. This is below sort, and this refers to the order in which the clusters appear in the chart. So this is what we were talking about before with my heritage auto clusters. So the first option is size. So you can put the largest cluster in the top left, and then it will go down to the right diagonally, largest to smallest, referring to the number of matches in a cluster. Then you can also choose to order each cluster by centimorgans, and that would put the clusters in order based on the max centimorgans shared with the primary kit. Another way to order it is by size super clustered. And this is where um, first all the clusters are grouped into super clusters based on clusters who have many cross cluster matches. And so all those gray squares, um, then you'll see all those put together into one big super cluster. Um, then they'll be um, ordered by size after that. And then the last way to order them is by having um, Centimorgan super clustered. So this puts your clusters in order after they're grouped into supercluster by those clusters who have someone sharing the most centimorgans. So here's an example of a Collins Leads method chart that I generated with matches from 550 to 400 centimorgans. And the clusters were ordered by inclusion. So that means that within the cluster, those who match the most others are in the top left. So looking at this large green cluster, at the top left of that, all those matches really match everyone else within the first you know, five or 10 rows. And then towards the bottom, we get matches who don't match everyone else in the cluster, but are still matching a lot of people in the cluster. And then um, the other way that I sorted this graph is by um, size with super clusters, and that refers to how the clusters are put into groups and into orders, into an order. So the uh, first thing that happened was that the green group, the red group, the teal, and the pink group were all put into a super cluster together because they have a lot of cross clustering, uh, cross cluster matches between them, as you can see by those light colored squares um, in between them. And so after that, then uh, the other groups were put into super clusters as well, and then they were put into order based on the largest super cluster, then the next largest, and so forth. So the most matches were in the top left. So the takeaway from this question and answer is that you should read the help pages for the Collins and Leads method because it explains what all of the different settings mean. And then another takeaway is that it's best to have the clusters grouped by supercluster because this shows you connections between clusters and can help you identify what side it's on, the common ancestral couple, and unknown clusters who are linked to known clusters can help you identify unknown ancestors, which is a lot of our goal in genetic genealogy. So just remember that uh, viewing your clusters by supercluster can help you see connections between them. And good luck.